Human trafficking is a disturbing subculture of society with deep roots in communities all across the country and here in the Hoosier State. Nicole Christine looked into the misconceptions and realities of human trafficking and has this special report with some important information that could help keep your loved ones from harm. Eric Harris says he was first exploited at the age of 10. That's when my mom um, started to introduce me to the pedophilia culture by having supposed co-workers come over and crossing my personal boundaries. Several years passed with Harris growing into adulthood under circumstances many people could not imagine. He was in and out of the criminal justice system, was made a ward of the state at one point, and was exploited for labor during his time in foster care before finding himself back with his mother at the age of 18. And that's kind of where I dived deeply into criminal activity, um, you know, forms of uh, exchanging services to get what I needed to survive. Genevieve Meyer says she was also trafficked at a young age. I had a 37 year old boyfriend who owned the home that we were living in that we um, were renting from him and nobody was really working and everybody just kind of looked the other way. Another young girl heard Meyer talking about this relationship, told her mother and the situation was reported to officials. But that's not where Meyer's trafficking experiences ended. And that's a common misconception of that people are only trafficked once and once you get out of it, if you're lucky enough to get out of it, then you know, your life just goes back to normal or whatever, you know, it was before whatever you choose. And that's not the case that I was actually forced to marry my 43 year old perpetrator when I was only 15. While both Harris and Myers trafficking experiences happened decades ago, their survivors of exploitation still happening to people today. In 2019, 157 Indiana human trafficking cases were reported to the National Human Trafficking Hotline, a 19% increase from the year before. Of those cases, 40 involved minors. And those numbers are actually underrepresentative of how much human trafficking is actually happening. In 2019, Ascent 121, an Indiana agency that specializes in working with sex trafficking survivors, reported providing services for 117 minors. That's 77 more cases than were reported to the national hotline. The reason why that report is different from the numbers that uh, we serve throughout the year is because all of those numbers that Polaris reports is from their national trafficking tip hotline. And so that represents a small fraction of the number of the clients that we serve. And Indiana doesn't really have a centralized mechanism of reporting. We do the best we can. And the discrepancy in those numbers does have consequences. That discrepancy matters when you ask a funder for, you know, think about ILS applying to a grant. And if the only numbers they had had was the hotline, a funder is going to look at them and go, well, why do you need a big old program? But programming is needed, along with a true understanding of human trafficking itself. Kids that are getting stolen out of parking lots, tied up in the back of vans and then are chained to basement walls. Um, that is not what human trafficking is. The reality is these kids are sitting in class with your kids. They're sitting in the pew next to you at church um, and you're missing the signs of what young people display behaviorally when they've experienced this type of trauma. And the common belief that big events like the upcoming Indianapolis 500 means more trafficking is a dangerous misconception. I could take you out today and show you just as many victims of trafficking as I would when the Indian Indianapolis 500 comes into town. Kate Kimmer says one third of trafficking cases occur within families, similar to what Harris and Meyer experienced. Both survivors are now using their experiences to better the lives of others, with Harris working as a lived experience consultant and Meyer at the helm of a foundation helping fight child marriage and exploitation. Both say education, donation, and mentorships are key to ending this tragic phenomenon. My trafficking experience happened 33 years ago and nothing's changed. Until we start reinvesting in our kids and the future, we're never going to really come to an end to this issue. With local news that matters, Nicole Christine, WTWO. And one of Genevieve Myers' traffickers was charged with gross sexual imposition in Ohio, a charge that landed him 180 days in a county jail and two years probation. 
None of Eric Harris's traffickers were ever prosecuted. Now, that report mentioned people often miss the signs of human trafficking. So we have a list of those warning signs, along with a lot more information on this topic. It's all part of a larger story on our website, mywellbashvalley.com.